All right, class, welcome to this video on Unit 3. This is going to be a review. Uh, it might be a little bit longer than usual, this video, because uh, we're going to be going over everything that you need to know in order to do your evaluation this week. I'm going to go over a few terms to start us off. Uh, so we've been working with scatter plots. That uh, should be obvious. A scatter plot is a graph that has points showing the relationship between two sets of data. I mean, there's not going to be a question on the evaluation, uh, what is a scatter plot, for example, but I mean, you should have a basic sense of what we are working on. Um, now, the two sets of data, those two sets are called variables, and one is a dependent variable and one is an independent variable. An independent, uh, sorry, a dependent variable is a variable often denoted by y, the variable y, whose value depends on that of another. Okay, it's also sometimes called the output. An independent variable is a variable often denoted by x whose variation does not depend on that of, a no of another, and it's often called the input. And just do a couple examples here. For example, if I have test results and homework hours, which one do you think is the independent variable and which one is the dependent variable? Well, your test result would depend on likely how many hours you studied. And we've talked about this before, so obviously it's not a perfect predictor. You're going to have some people who are going to not study very much and still get a high mark, or people who study very hard and get a low mark. But the general trend would be that the more hours you put into study, your independent variable, the higher your mark would be your dependent variable. And so you'd have a graph, you know, that would look something like this, you know, it would have points like this. and. You might have an outlier, you know, someone who didn't study very much but got a high mark, or you might have another outlier over here, someone who studied very hard but got a low mark, okay? But the general trend would be upward, uh, and the independent variable would be the homework hours, and the dependent variable would be, would be the test result. How about blood alcohol level and reaction time? Think about it for a second. Well, you're blood alcohol level would likely have some impact on your reaction time. Uh, the higher your blood alcohol level, the more someone had uh, drank, then the slower their reaction time would likely be. So that means the blood alcohol level is your independent variable and your reaction time is the dependent variable. And then what about comfort level and temperature? Well, this comfort level, is it possible the comfort level could have an effect on the temperature? I think not. So the independent variable would be the temperature. The temperature would likely have an effect on your comfort level. Okay, so you can see here we've identified the independent variable versus the dependent variable. You need to be able to do that for your evaluation. All right, moving on, we could look at trend. A trend is a pattern in a set of data points. Trend can be described as upward or downward. Uh, to the right, so we always just say upward or downward. Trend is just the pattern of the dots. Once you've looked at trend, you could then begin to describe correlation. Correlation is a statistical measure that indicates the extent to which two or more variables change together. Correlation is positive when the values increase together. On a graph, the points go up to the right. And correlation is negative when one value decreases as the other increases. On a graph, the points go down to the right. Okay, so you can see if you have an upward trend, that means the correlation is positive. If you have a downward trend, that means the correlation is negative. Correlation can also be described as strong, weak, or none. Correlation can also be described as linear, that if the data points roughly form a straight line, or nonlinear, if the data points do not roughly form a straight line. From the trend, as I mentioned, you can describe the correlation. And here you can see three examples. We have a strong positive correlation over here. The line, the points are going up to the right, forms roughly a straight line. This would definitely uh, be a, linea a linear. And we have a weak negative correlation. Now I might say this is this could be described as either uh, weak or moderate. And then we have no correlation over here where you can't form any kind of line from the dots. All right, now let's look at line of best fit. A line of best fit is a line on a graph showing the general direction that a group of points seem to be uh, heading. And you can see the line here drawn, and there are specific rules for lines of best fit, which we'll cover in a moment. 
And then we also learned the terms interpolate and extrapolate. So interpolate means to in, uh, means making a prediction within a data set. So you can see here, we have data that goes from about 11 up to 25. And in this case, we were, we were trying to make a prediction based on uh, the cost based on the temperature of 21 degrees or the dollar amount. We're not quite sure what it is because it's not labeled properly. But 21 degrees, and then we would be able to say 480, uh, we've interpolated because 21 degrees is in between 11 and 25. So that's interpolation when the data. So if we said 18, that would also be, if we were trying to make a prediction based on 18, because 18 is between 11 and 25. What about extrapolate? Extrapolate means making a prediction outside of a data set. So if you look at this uh, graph right here, then you can see uh, that they try to make a prediction based on a temperature of 29 degrees. Did they have data for 29 degrees? No, they had data from 25 to 12, right? I said 11 there, I should have said 12 up here. Yeah, it's 12 to 25 and 29 is outside of those numbers. If they also had said 11 or if they had said 10, those numbers are outside the data set. Okay, so that's extrapolate. First differences, differences between the y values and the table of values. So you can see the pattern of x is going up by one, and therefore I can look over here and see the first differences are one. As long as the x values are going up by the same amount, and then we can calculate the first differences over here. So the first difference is the change in the y values. All right, creating a graph. I'm not going to go over in too much detail. You kind of lucked out by having distance learning. We won't be doing too many graphs uh, this year. We did quite a few before you left, so hopefully that was enough to get the message across in terms of what you need to do in order to create a graph, but you can see the basics of it there as well. How to draw a line of best fit. There are some rules when drawing a line of best fit. Uh, remember to follow these rules. The line must follow the trend. This has got to be the most important one. See, this line here follows the trend. It goes up to the right. It, not following the trend would be a line like this. Could that be the answer? Absolutely not, because it does not fall. The line does not follow the trend. Okay, another one says the line should go through as many points as possible. That's, that's important, but more important than that is this point here, that there should be about the same number of points above and below the line. It's, and, and sometimes it'll be off by one, that's fine, but in general you want to have as uh, the same number of points above and below the line. And it says here the line should pass through all point, through points all along the line, not just at the end. So it's not about connecting the, do connecting the dots one point to the other. It's about trying to draw a line that represents the points on the graph as uh, correctly as possible or accurately as possible. All right, so now we can look at the pattern rule uh, and we're trying to create uh, patterns, pattern rules in the form y equals mx plus b. And you can do that by following the, the steps here. So what we're gonna do is uh, first we're gonna put uh, figure numbers for these. So one, two, and three. And then this here is going to be figure numbers. And this over here is going to be number of sticks, match sticks. All right, so it says create a table of values. We're going to create a table of values. When you do this, I want you to start with zero in the X column. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to count how many sticks are there in figure number one there's one two three four five so we could write for number one five and how many is there for number two one two three four five six seven eight is that right uh three three eight that's correct all right so then now let's count the next one one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 11. So what do you notice about this? What's what's happening here? It's each time going up by how much? It's going up by 3, which means we could know the next one is going to be 14. We add 3 to 11. 14 plus 3 gives me 17. Good. So now I've created my uh, table of values, and... I can determine the number two, the rate of change, the slope by calculating the first differences in the Y column. So here are the first differences. This is going up by one. 
So 3 over 1. I divide the first difference in the y column by the pattern in the x column. The change in y over the change in x. And I get 3 divided by 1, which means 3. m is equal to 3. How can I find the initial value? I find the initial value by following the pattern backwards in the y column. So you see 17, 14, 11. Notice it's going down by 3, down 3. 11 minus 3 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. That's right. So b, the y-intercept, is 2. So what's my equation then? Well, if my, I'm writing it in the form y equals mx plus b, then m and m is equal to b. So let's do, uh, we'll do m for the dependent variable, the matchsticks. What did we get for m? Uh, little m, we got 3 for the slope. And we'll do f for the figure number plus what was our y-intercept, our, our initial value? It was 2. And so this is our equation. All right, this is our pattern rule. All right, so you'll get a chance to you'll get a chance to practice that quite a bit in this handout uh, right here. Uh, I'll do with you one more example, and then you can complete this handout as part of your assignment. All right, so let's look at uh, this one. Uh, let's do, yeah, we'll do this one here. It says here, examine the pattern, this pattern of connected squares creating, uh, created using toothpicks. It's a sketch the next two terms above. So if you see we're counting the number of boards or toothpicks, I guess this should say uh, toothpicks. And we'll put a T for it. And this first one has four. And this one is 7, and this one is 10, and this one is 13, right? How did I how did I know that? Because this is 4, and then this added just 3 more, right? And then this just added 3 more, and then this just added 3 more. So it went up by 3 each time. And if we were counting the boxes, it was 1 box, 2 box, 3 box, 4 box. So this is going to be 5 boxes and that's going to be 16 and this is going to be six boxes and this is going to be 19. all right six good thing i can count all right so there we go now we we can fill this in number one here is four set number two is seven number three is ten number four is thirteen number five is sixteen number six is nineteen and we're going up by three each time as we saw up by three each time up by three up by three and so if we go down by three we get to one all right so now what is the equation of the uh, pattern we're, we're going to skip the uh, graph for now um, actually let's do it really quick really quickly since this is a simple enough one to do We'll do the y column is going to be the number of tooth or the y axis is the number of toothpicks and the term number is down here and uh, we make this scale we'll make this scale go up by one two three four five and six and we'll make this scale here go up by 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and we just squeeze in here 20 at the top. And now we can plot some points. Plot some points. So we have 0 and 1, which would be here. 1 and 4, which would be here. 2 and 7. 3 and 10. 4 and 13, 5 and 16, and 6 and 19. There you go. And we would make a line, straight line, nice, nice line there. And we put our title of term number, term number versus, versus number of toothpicks. 
All right, and there you go. That's how you would make that uh, graph. And you just need to be able to recognize the relationship between the graph and the table of values so the purpose of your evaluation. All right, now we can look at the, equa the, the pattern. So if you recall, we want to first find the rate of change, uh, which is the slope, m. And in this case, it's the same as the other example we just did. This is going up by 1 each time. And this is going up by 3. So m is 3 divided by 1 and gives us 3. That's our slope. So our slope is 3. And what's our y-intercept, our, our initial value? Our initial value is right here. It's the value of y when x is equal to 0. Uh, we figured that out moments ago. And so that's b. b is equal to 1. So what's our equation in the form y, y equals mx plus b? Well, we could do t is equal to 3 uh, n plus 1. There's your, there's your equation. Okay. So I want you to now do the rest of this uh, handout on your, on your own. Uh, it's in the attachment with the assignments, and you're going to be submitting that later on. All right. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it for now. And what I'll do is I'll post an answer key for the practice quiz. And then that way you can check and make sure that you're doing it correctly. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Uh, hopefully this video helps and prepares you. Make sure you watch it several times if you need to uh, and ask questions if you have any.